morning, everyone. I'm Tucker Carlson. I'm like if those shorts with the little whales on them came to life. <laughs> Our top story tonight, President Trump's heroic end to the shutdown. It did take him 35 days, but he was finally able to get no wall. <laughs> Meanwhile, as the Democrats stall, the crisis at our border rages on. Here with her take is the host of Justice with Judge Janine, Janine Pirro. Janine, how are you? A lot. <laughs> now, now, Janine, I'm going to smugly ask a question that I already know the answer to, and a warning to our viewers, my voice will get very high. These Democrats, do they want MS-13 invading their towns and tying up their hands and feet with duct tape? <laughs> the answer to that question is si senor at this point ms-13 is getting so brazen they're promoting their own holiday in america it's called sicario day of the soldat wow so so what is the president's next step janine and to show I'm really paying attention to you i'm going to put on my listening face i call it dog looking into mirror well, <laughs> Tucker, we have to take a Marie Kondo approach to cleaning up this country. If something doesn't spark joy, throw it out. And you know what doesn't spark joy in me? Guatemala. Terrific. And let me ask you this. Weren't the furloughed government workers happy to go without pay because they believe in the president and the wall? Definitely not, but absolutely yes. I spoke with dozens of TSA workers, and they said they were so honored to work for free. And then they did the universal gesture for jerking off. That's how excited they were. <laughs> Janine, you're the best. I know! <laughs> of course, Democrats are using the shutdown to portray the Trump administration as out of touch with everyday Americans. But that's simply ridiculous. Here to comment is Secretary of Commerce and Man of the People, Wilbur Ross. Where, where do I look? Do I look into the spaceship? Now, Wilbur, earlier this week, you said that you didn't understand why furloughed government workers needed food assistance because they could just, quote, take out low-interest loans instead. Right. Well, that was silly of me. I simply meant that there are other ways of getting money. Like, they could have liquidated some of their stocks or sold one of their paintings. I mean, even if they sold a lesser Picasso, that's still gonna get you through a week or two of yacht maintenance. I still think that comes across as insensitive to people living paycheck to paycheck. No, no. All I meant was that we all have to make sacrifices in times of hardship. For example, instead of going out to dinner, you could open a restaurant in your house. <laughs> or for a period of time, you could have your horses attend public school. <laughs> the small things add up. So you don't think the Trump administration is out of step with the American people? No, no. <laughs> Look, maybe I do sleep in one of the cocoons from the movie Cocoon. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I live in a bubble. I live in a cocoon. My thanks to Secretary Ross. Our final story this week, of course, is the dramatic, some would say ludicrous arrest of longtime Trump associate Roger Stone. The man is 66 years old, frail, barely able to post shirtless photos of his jacked body. Clearly, no threat to anyone, yet this is somehow the FBI, this is how they raided his home. Come on, man. Yeah, just horrifying. Now, here with his side of the story is a man you look at and instantly think, I trust this guy. Please welcome Roger Stone. fun couple of days. I'm loving the ride. Go Nixon! <laughs> Mr. Stone, you had a harrowing past 36 hours. Your home was raided. You were arrested and charged with seven felony counts, including lying to Congress. I was four counts. What? 
the indictment says seven. Okay, I'm lying. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I mean, seven felonies, one, two, three, I can't even count that high. How cool is that? But, but, Mr. Stone, what I think you're really trying to say is that you're a feeble old man, right? Oh, yeah, right. The, the pity thing I want to go I'm just a poor, helpless old man. I'm, I'm 66. I'm almost as old as Sting. And that's why it was so awful the way the police raided your home. Exactly! The whole experience was so harrowing, and afterwards I could only manage one radio interview and a speech from the steps of the courthouse and two appearances on television. It's horrible! And, and, and you, and haven't these ridiculous accusations made you poverty-stricken as well? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm broke from my legal battles, and now no one will buy my books. Well, why will no one buy your books? Because they're bad! <laughs> okay, just tell people how they can donate money to help you. I've set up a donation page based on a phrase people have been yelling everywhere at me called, Hey, Roger, go fund yourself. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Stone. Pardon me? I said thank you. Oh, no. I thought that wasn't a question. I was saying that to the president. Pardon me! <laughs> Well, I'm sure he appreciates your loyalty and your eccentricities. Hey, I'm just a normal and straightforward guy. <laughs> and live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs>